this will start the uh, segment on gel magicing and uh, well actually jump stitching the seams with gel magic and then we'll remove the wires and the bolts and do the filleting uh, should be able to do all that in one uh, one uh, episode uh, there's plenty of other ones to fill in uh, some of the other ones or it may run long so you'll notice I've got some boards here and I got my long uh, level the hole is tied down and I've been checking for level and I also put in a center line string with some of my pencil bobs to hang along to make certain that they're pointing at the keel line uh, there can be a little bit of uh, you know off on this I mean you know it's we're not building with a jig even with a jig I don't know how straight a boat eventually becomes but we're so close now I'm not going to even worry about it and some of the stuff would be as to how if the nose came off a little bit but remember we measure equal distance um, I don't have a center line projection off the keel to see if the bow has tilted or not but it's close enough and it's if it is it's leaned this way just a hair but you won't notice it keel line still straight and the other thing I've done too is I've taken uh, like my uh, handle on my my putty knife here, and I've gone around to where the seams are to be certain, make certain that everything is still in alignment. The boat has been tied down for a while. It's easy for it to the panel edges to ride up over each other. Um, I also have already uh, taken a uh, one of the uh, acid brushes and then uh, taken some straight mixed epoxy, just regular silver tip A and B mixed together in two to one and then gone along and painted the exposed edge between the panels where they come together that way so when you put in the uh, gel magic uh, that it uh, um, doesn't give you a dry joint that doesn't suck the, the epoxy into the very porous ingrain here so that's all done I've also got my blue tape on top of all of the uh, the bolts and uh, let me go ahead and take everything out get it out of the way uh, I might leave the uh, middle gauge in just as a reference check, but the center line and the pencil bobs and everything can come out. So let me go ahead and get that. And we'll put on our mixing nozzle on our uh, gel tube or uh, Utah tube, gel magic, and we'll come back and start uh, jump stitching the seams. The other thing you want to do besides making be certain that the sides are 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 tight, just go around and then flick the wires. Just give them a little pull and then tighten if they need to be and then uh, go around with your wrench and be sure that the, uh, the nuts are all tight which they are but it's those little things you want to check before you do this and then give it a good visual that nothing looks out of line uh, feel along that you know they look right and then uh, on the outside give your fingers uh, you know feel that edge that it's not one way or the other don't slide it because you're likely to uh, uh, get a pick up a splinter but go up and down 90 degrees to the seam and you can feel along as to whether it feels right or not watch out for the little wires they don't poke holes in your gloves and run okay I've done this already so I know it's fine so let me go ahead and uh, zoom up on another setup here so you can see me uh, a little closer up yeah, I got my tube and I'll start pumping in. You can see the uh, stuff starting to go up the tube here. And mixing, you can see it changing color. Started out as blue over here and now it's kind of a golden color. So, let's go down and fill in this void we got here. I'll put a little bit more in it. It's already sealed up pretty good. The Phillip compound will uh, do the final, final gap filling. And I find, let me go left handed here. I'm going to work this way. I find it's easier to work in the direction of travel to squeeze. gets it in, pressurizes it into the groove a little bit better.
they had more of a gap on the uh, six mil ply. I didn't bevel it quite as much on this. I'm doing a two-stroke here, push forward, and I also took a, uh, a utility knife and put a slight bevel on the nozzle angle. That's letting it go in a little, a little better. Just remember, keep pushing and then pull, and not vice versa. You can see, I mean, it goes pretty, pretty quick. I have this Spanish windlass here to keep the, uh, a little bit of tension on the part here to keep the hole from sagging. Come along after you have it to check on see how it's puddling up and it tends to, to flow uh, but not so dry. I mean it uh, tends to puddle in, you know, kind of like relax into its position and uh, smooth itself out, but it doesn't want to go running off hilly willy nilly down the down the hillside, but come along with your putty knife and just kind of clean up any of the spots that uh, you may have dribbled on, but uh, let's see what it, I think it took me, uh, oh, get down here, it took me probably less than half an hour to do this, I don't even think it was that long, maybe 20 minutes, more time setting up the camera than anything else. So uh, the hull's still, still level, and uh, now I'll let that cure overnight. There was one little piece I had to uh, add to the bow, uh, got a clamp on it now. Uh, so we'll let that set overnight, and actually for a couple days. This is what, Friday the 15th, I'll probably uh, pull the wires on Monday the 17th. Uh, just to, uh, you know, 16th, uh, 18th, excuse me, I can count, uh, just to let it set long enough to uh, cure uh, that it's not going to take any seams. I also, uh, since there was pretty good sized gaps on the outside, I took the nozzle while I had it and jump stitched on the outside about every, uh, every foot or so, gave it like a three or four inch little, little uh, fillet on the outside, and then just use your finger, glove finger, to uh, smooth it out and smooth it into the uh, into the, the opening. Uh, just give you a little extra uh, strength there in case you're nervous. You can see that I've already pulled out the bolts. I did that uh, on Sunday. And so now I'm going to uh, take out my trusty uh, nibbler here and uh, pop the wires. I like to get them down there. So then when I go on the outside and grab them, I'll use it, you'll see this thing has got curved jaws on it. I found this, uh, but if you have a horseshoeing uh, farrier friend, uh, uh, they'll usually have some of these or you can get them at a hardware store. They're just kind of like, I call them nibblers, I don't know exactly what the official name was. But then you grab the uh, twisted pair on the outside and just pull it out and you got it. So, Is that moment of truth when you know, I haven't had a seam pop yet? And the gel magic's all cured up. 
so let me go ahead and do the rest of this off camera and we'll come back when I get it done because then I'll go ahead and, and, and use a uh, rasp and clean up the rough edges and get ready for the uh, the filleting process when we use the easy fillet to put in our little uh, wood filled epoxy fillets. So let me finish this up and we'll come back. I've got all the uh, wires out of it now and uh, the big thing I wanted to see was how <laughs> heavy this thing is and it's not that heavy at all. I'm going to take it outside and uh, I'm going to see what it looks like uh, outside. Uh, normally I have to wait until everything's finished but it's lighting up. I'm going to carry this outside and we'll, we'll set up out there. It's, it's outside and it's you know one arm liftable so far. But, shape, the general size idea. Get an idea of the bottom here. And I always like to, I don't know if you can see that or not, the shape of the bow and the curve. I'm really going to be happy with the coat. And then on the, the transom, you can see the transom angle in here. I'd set in it if I had uh, my uh, tape and filleting done, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and take it back in the barn now. I just, <laughs> I just wanted to see it outside. And it's not raining today. Well, I decided before I put it in the barn, I'm going to take it and set it on Vince, my uh, 79 Volkswagen bus, uh, and then show you how that looks. It's been a lot of boats and sailboards and kayaks and canoes. I want to give you guys a motion sickness. And that's 14 feet. So it, you're going to be able to get two of those on there at 34 inch beam. I've had a couple 36 uh, inch kayaks on those uh, longer uh, 78 inch uh, Yakima bars. So get back here. Uh, okay, enough fun and games. Let's go back to work again. It's going to be, can't wait to get in that one. Mm -hmm.